Hi everybody, welcome back to Dynamic Sport Adventures Wilderness Survival Series. As you can see there's snow on the ground and I want to talk about uh, winter, winter survival and friction fire. We've showed you a couple of videos on how to make a bow and drill friction fire as well as hand drills and some of the other methods. Uh, the problem with uh, survival situation, it's not as easy as it looks. I have a kit that I use for our students which makes it a little easier. Um, but in the wilderness survival situation, you're going to add in factors like what's, what's going to happen today is the moisture. You can see there's snow on the ground. So your materials you're going to have to find are going to have to be the utmost driest materials. Breaking off branches from dead standing uh, timber that's not on the ground where moisture is going to be in them. Um, you're going to have the situation of the moisture in the air. Even your breath when you're trying to blow on that ember once it gets going will have moisture in it because of the cold air. Um, it's probably in a low 20s right now and you can see there's snow on the ground. So what you want to try to do is get your fireboard up off the ground, put it on another piece of wood or a dry rock or something. Your fireboard has to be dry. If you're going to be using a leaf or a piece of birch bark to catch your ember in, you're going to make sure that that's nice and dry. Your tinder nest, I shaved off the outside of a sunny side, the sun was shining earlier. So on the sunny side of a red cedar tree, I took the edge of my knife and shaved down some of that bark to get fine shavings. I'm also lucky to have a pond nearby, which is an excellent tinder nest, is a piece of cattail that if we get an ember going, that should catch that ember going pretty well. I got a couple small twigs. Again, I'm just talking today more so not so much about friction fire itself, the bow and drill method is what we're using, but the, the problems of uh, survival situation. Don't get yourself into this situation. If you have to make a fire because you don't have the proper materials, a lighter or even some flint and steel or, or uh, some of these commercial fire starters available or matches, whatever, and you have to try to make a fire with a friction method, you're in big trouble. So luckily most of our wilderness situations we don't have to deal with that so let's see if we can get an ember going transfer it over again even your breath this time of year is going to have moisture in it so it's going to be very hard and very crucial to keep that ember care and not try to force it you're probably going to go have to go as twice as long um, the fireboard is cottonwood and the spindle is cottonwood again your your good woods or cottonwood cedars um, I have done it with pine this time of year. Pine is a little soft and it's hard to get that ember to stay lit. You can see the smoking already. Here's the other situation. It's cold out and I'm already starting to sweat a little bit just from this little bit of work and that's a big issue. Now you're in trouble. Not only are you already cold, so make sure you're managing your, your own body heat. So we see some smoke come off of there. Again, in the summertime, the dry time of the year, that ember probably would already be going enough where I wouldn't worry about it. I would stop and try to blow it to get going. But this time of year, I don't know. We got a big pile of ember there. It's smoking, but again, you can see if I was to blow on that this time of year, I do start to see a coal going. That's pretty darn good. That's unusual, not typical. I don't know if you can see that, but my breath, when you blow your breath this time of year, you'll see that fog from your breath from the coldness of the air. Again, I'm taking twice as long as I normally probably would with this ember. You can see that gone. A little bit of breeze. I'm going to let that dust just, just bake some more before I try transferring it. Ever so gently put that into your bird's nest. You can see that going now. 
I'm going to try to let that burn just a little bit here. Hopefully the camera still got that in view. I'm going to take some of my cattail now. Try to work that into that. And there you got a little bit of fire. You saw the flame come on there. Again, the cattail is a very good source for tenderness. So you can see I got a fire going. I hope that's in the video there. That is not typical this time of year. Again, I'm using a kit that I have for students to get this fire going early or easier. In the wilderness, we're gonna make this from virgin wood and it's 10 times harder. Add the moisture, add injury, add hypothermia, add all the other elements that go along in a survival situation and you're in trouble. Do not put yourself in this situation. Um, we have classes on this to try to show people how to make friction fire. So if you're interested, let us know. Give us a little message and we're here to help you. Thanks for watching Dynamic Sport Adventures. Be safe. Plan and prepare. Get outdoors. Happy hiking.